Welcome back guys. So last week on Instagram, we announced that we are launching a van layout. So we asked you guys if you had any uh, feedback, things that you wanted to see as we're still putting some finishing touches on it. And a lot of people messaged us and asked if we would include some of our electrical and solar setup. So that wasn't something that we were planning on including in our layout, but we still want to help you guys with that information. So we decided to sit down today and talk about everything electrical and solar. We wanted to start off by saying that we are no, by no means electrical engineers. And when we were starting this, we were very new to all this. So we wanted to make this video for those newbies who are just now starting to plan out a van or start building out a van. For those of you that may be electrical engineers, please go easy on us because <laughs> our terminology might not be perfect, but we're basically just explaining things from our beginner perspective. Yeah. So let's just dive right into it. When you're first planning out your van, the very first thing you want to do is make a list of everything that's going in your van that's going to need to be powered by electricity. So these things will include your lights, your fans, your water pump, your switches, your outlets, your sensors, anything else that might need electricity. So once you've made that list of everything that's going in the van and needs to be powered, you need to determine if it is 12 volt or 120 volt. So let's talk about the difference between 120 volts and 12 volts. When we're talking about 12 volts, we're talking about DC, also known as direct current. The batteries that you have that are powering everything in your van are typically going to be putting off 12 volts. This means that you're going to have two wires. You're going to have positive and negative, very simple. Then you have your 120 volt. That's also known as AC or alternating current. When we're talking about 120 volt, that's going to be like your typical house outlet that you plug something into and for that you're going to have three wires and instead of talking positive and negative you're going to have your live your neutral and your ground so if you're wondering how you power your 120 volt off your 12 volt batteries that's where our inverter comes in we have a renergy 2000 watt pure sine wave inverter which is also a converter and charge controller an inverter takes 12 volt and turns it into 120 volt a converter turns 120 volt into 12 volt and that's helpful when you want to plug into shore power. Now that you hopefully have a basic understanding of the difference between 12 volt DC power and 120 volt AC power, let's talk about wiring your van. When you're planning out your van build, you want to make sure that you're planning your wiring before you start any building. This is because you're going to want all those wires to be safed up behind your walls and make sure you have it all squared away before you start building things on top of it and they're not very accessible. When you're mapping out your wiring, you need to know where everything in your van that needs to be powered is going to be and where your battery bank is going to be. And then what you're going to do is basically just run the wire from where your battery bank will be all the way to where you're going to power something. We cannot emphasize enough how important it is to plan everything. There's really no room for afterthoughts here, so you need to make sure that you know where everything is going and you know everything that's going in there before you start. Then you're going to need to choose your proper wiring. If it runs off a of 12 volt, then you're going to use your typical red, black, positive, negative. If you're wiring a switch, like for our lights, it calls for a three strand wire, which is positive, negative, neutral. And if you're running 120 volt, you use Romex. Okay, now let's get into some of the tips that we have for wiring. Tip number one, which is very, very important, is wiring safely. If you're running wires through metal, which you likely are because you'll be running wires through the ribs of your van, you may have to make some cuts to run wires through. You need to make sure that you're safing up those sharp edges. You need to have plenty of insulation on your wires, and it's a good idea to use rubber grommets on anywhere that you have drilled holes through to run wires. You can also use a plastic shielding to make sure that nothing is going to rub on your wires. Now this is really important because over time as you're driving your wires might be rattling around, you really don't want them to rub on anything that could potentially cut through the insulation and then you have a loose live wire in your van. Tip number two is leave yourself plenty of wire to work with. Last thing that you want to happen is you're finished with your van build and you go to hook everything up and it doesn't reach. And our last tip we have for wiring is to label everything. This is almost just as important as the whole planning phase. So you need to make sure that you're labeling the beginning and the end of your wire and do it as you go. Don't wait until you have everything ran and then you're trying to figure out what went where. Once you've run all the proper wiring to a central location, you need to take all of your 12 volt and wire it to a 12 volt fuse box. 
and all of your 120 volt to our inverter, which is already fused. Okay, so that should cover the basics of wiring. Now let's talk about your power supply, AKA your batteries. When it comes to batteries, you have a few different options, but what we decided to go with is deep cycle gel AGM batteries. We have two 100 amp hour batteries. Now the reason that we like the batteries that we have is because they were more affordable than going with something like a lithium ion battery. Uh, because they're deep cycle, they allow us to discharge and recharge safely. And lastly, they're totally sealed, which is just safer overall. So while 200 amp hours of batteries works for us, you may have different needs. So you should make sure that you calculate everything that you're gonna be powering in a day and decide if you're gonna need more power than that or if you can get by with less. So here's some of the tips that we have for you when it comes to your batteries. Now tip number one is to make sure that you're always using the proper size wire when you're wiring your batteries together. The last thing you want is to have hot wires between your batteries, which can be very dangerous. So your batteries should come with a manual and they should have a suggestion for what size wires you need to use. Make sure you don't skimp on it, do what it says, bigger is better, use high quality stuff. Tip number two is ventilation. You always wanna ventilate the area you have your batteries in because those guys get hot and sometimes off gas. What we have is a fan at the end of our cabinet. Um, within our benches and our cabinets is all open and since we have a computer fan at the end of it, it pulls air from our benches over our batteries and out underneath our refrigerator, out the bottom of the van. The last tip that we have for you guys is super important, and that is to always make sure that you have multiple ways to recharge your batteries. Which also brings us to our next point. So let's talk about the different ways you can charge your batteries. One of the most popular ways to charge your batteries in a van is a solar setup. What solar does is harnesses the energy of the sun and dumps it into our batteries. We have two 100 watt monocrystalline solar panels and in between our solar panels and our batteries we have a solar controller. We have a Renergy Rover 40 amp MPPT charge controller. What that does is when our solar panels are charging our batteries, if our batteries get full, it dumps the excess energy so it doesn't hurt our batteries. So most of the time solar is a good option to continuously charge your batteries. But what if you go a few days without sun, or even worse, a few weeks, then you have nothing to charge your batteries. So that's why you want a few different options to charge if one of them fails. So one of the things you can do is actually use shore power. And what we mean by shore power is basically any external power, so plugging into a socket outside of the van. So this could be like on the side of the house, at a campsite where you can plug in, or wherever you can access power. This is where having the inverter and converter comes into play because you'll be plugging into 120 volts and you wanna turn that into 12 volts to charge your battery. And that's exactly what a converter does. So in between your connection to 120 volt power to your batteries, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you have that on a breaker. So a breaker is essentially just the 120 volt version of a fuse. What this will do is in the case of there being a surge of electricity that's more than your converter can handle, it will actually break the connection to protect it. It's just an added layer of protection to make sure that you don't fry anything. We actually happen to have two breakers. If you watched our van tour, you may have noticed that we actually have an AC unit in here. So we have our AC unit completely separate from our inverter converter and that is on its own breaker. So that means that our AC unit can only be powered off of our shore power. Luckily, we don't need to use it very often, but it's a good option because we do have family in Arizona so that we can visit during the hot months. Being able to plug into shore power is great if you're in a city or maybe you're paying for a campsite, but we don't pay for campsites all that often and it's not always easy to find power for free. So there is another option if you wanna be off grid and have an alternative to solar power. So if you're running off grid, Another alternate way to charge your batteries is your alternator. <laughs> Good one. <laughs> While you're driving, your alternator can also charge your house batteries. So you don't want your vehicle's front battery to be connected to your house batteries if you're not driving. What comes into play there is going to be a battery isolator. What this is going to do is connect them while you're driving so that your front alternator can trickle charge your back ones as well as your front ones. And then when you turn your vehicle off, it's actually going to disconnect those. So then the goal there is to keep the front battery fully charged and then you're powering everything inside your van just on these back batteries. So now let's get into our tips for charging. Tip number one for whatever you're using, whether that be your solar or your alternator or anything, is that you wanna make sure that everything is fused properly. 
So for our solar controller, there is an inline fuse. For our alternator, there's also a fuse. And even for our shore power, we have the breakers. So that's really important because you don't want to send too much electricity to something that can't handle it. We don't want to be frying anything. Tip number two is to figure out what is going to work best for you. We have 200 watts worth of solar on our roof and that powers everything that we need. Depending on what you need, that might you might need more solar than us or you might need less. So take some time to figure out what you have and what you need to power everything sufficiently. The last tip that we have for you guys is going to sound a little silly. Just bear with us. Read manuals. Okay, the reason that we say this is because there's little things that you might not think of that can actually have a big impact if you don't go through the whole manual and figure out how to do things properly. Mm -hmm. So for example, when you're wiring up your solar, there's a certain order that you need to do it. Mm -hmm. You can't just plug everything together and have it be a-okay because it could actually damage something. Mm -hmm. So pretty much everything you're gonna buy, as long as you're buying it new, will come with a manual. So take the time to read it, make sure you do it properly because you don't wanna spend money on something and then ruin it and then have to buy it all over again. That would totally suck. Okay guys, so we have covered the difference between 12 volt, 120 volt. We've talked about mapping your wires, how to wire um, your power supply and how you're gonna charge that power supply. So hopefully that information has given you at least somewhere to start. If you felt totally clueless about electrical and powering your things inside your van before you watch this video, Hopefully you feel a little bit more informed now. It's a lot of it's a lot of info. It's daunting, but you can do it. You can definitely do it because yeah. we didn't know we were doing yeah. it beforehand. If we can do it, you can do it. Definitely. Now, the other thing is that we didn't show you specifically how to wire things, but there's so many videos and resources on the internet that you definitely should utilize. There's no point in me sitting here and showing you how to do that because there's a million other videos that can show you how to do that. Lots more qualified people that can explain it probably a lot better than we can. Definitely. Yeah. So I hope you guys enjoyed this sort of beginner's perspective of um, doing all of your electricity in your van. As always, thanks for watching guys. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And tell us what you think was the most helpful tip. Yes. We'll see you guys later.